I talk to so many amazing people with awesome dreams and just these incredible things that they want to accomplish in life, but then they're beating themselves up because they can't seem to do it. They can't seem to actually be productive enough to get things done. And so earlier today, I was thinking through well, what's like what's like the root cause of that? What is the root, like deep down at its core reason why we struggle with being productive? Let's talk about it. I have a friend named Sam who is a great athlete and is always in incredible physical condition. And he's always running and swimming and playing tennis and other sports. And he's always going to the gym and working out. And a while back, he got into rowing. The row machine at his gym is this really cool, kind of modernized version that's electronic and it keeps track of all these different things. And it's got a scoreboard where everyone in the gym can compete. And I think it's like a 20 minute, 30 minute, something like that sprint where whoever goes the furthest distance in that amount of time has the high score right and it's got all the other scores down below it and you can put your name in you can feel pretty good about yourself based on you know where you rank versus the other folks there in the gym and for like a year sam had the high score and he felt pretty good about it and he would get on the row machine he would try to beat his high score but then some of his friends got kind of tired of sam having the high score and so they devised a plan and one day three of them came in and they got on the row machine and basically one guy would go as hard as he possibly could rowing, rowing, rowing for five minutes and then he would jump off and the next guy would jump on and row as hard as he could for five minutes and then jump off and they just rotated back to back to back over and over again until the time ran out and they ended up with the best score, the top score. And when it came to putting in the name for who had that score, they thought it would be funny if they put the name of a guy who was like 65, 68 years old, something like that. A guy that came to the gym pretty regularly who would get on the row machine sometimes that he was, you know, somewhere in the top hundred, but it'd be funny if they put his name in there. And when Sam came into the gym later on that afternoon, he couldn't believe it. What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. His score not only had been beaten, that he was now in second place, but from the old guy? From the dude that, what? How was, well, how is this possible? And Sam, he didn't really know what to do other than to get on the row machine and row as hard as he possibly could. But in spite of his best efforts that day, he could not beat the high score and so a couple days later he comes in again and he just goes as hard as he possibly can i mean just giving it his absolute maximum effort doesn't matter can't beat the top score and he's just racking his brain like how is this possible and his friends are loving it they're just laughing to themselves they're just dying on the inside and after i don't know a few weeks i think they let a few weeks go by they finally told sam what they had done and he was frustrated and a little bit annoyed and upset, but at the same time, highly relieved because the truth was he was still the best. He still had the best time in the gym. And I was thinking about that story and how it relates to why so often we feel bad. We, we, we feel like we want to accomplish this, but we only have accomplished that. And we set out to do a certain amount of work in a day, but then we didn't get it all done. And now we kind of have this depression that goes along with that. And, and why? Well, it's, it's because of comparison. Comparison at its core is, I think, the reason why we have so many other problems. I only look for comparison. I mean, the old saying is comparison is the thief of joy. And I think that is about as much of an absolute truth as there is in the universe. And so what are you comparing yourself to? Who are you comparing yourself to and why? Because it might just be your biggest problem without you realizing it. And a lot of times we think it's things like procrastination where it's like, okay, I wanna do all this stuff, but then I just end up watching cat videos on the internet and not getting anything done, or I have this imposter syndrome, or I have just this lack of motivation, or just all these limiting beliefs or whatever it is. But I think all of those things and everything similar to it are really just side effects to comparison. So often we're comparing ourselves to other people and then, and then feeling less than because maybe they've accomplished more than we have or they have more money, more status, more things out on the market, more published whatever's to their name. And then we look at us, we're like, oh, I'm just little old me. And then because of that gap between them and us, we feel bad. And then all these other things pop up, I believe, as side effects. It's not just that you're procrastinating. You're procrastinating because you're so overwhelmed by the comparison of what you need to get done and how much time you actually have to do it or the things you want to accomplish versus your actual current skill level. And then that gap 
creates these issues. But it's not procrastination. That's not the problem. That's just a symptom of the actual problem, which is comparison. You have imposter syndrome because you're thinking through who you really are deep down, but then you're comparing that to what other people think. And then you're thinking, oh, well, maybe there's this big rift. There's this big divide. But again, it's not imposter syndrome. It's comparison that's the issue. It's not that you really have limiting beliefs or a lack of motivation. It's that you're looking at other people. You're looking at other ideas. You're looking at even just a, a different notion of who you are. And then you're comparing that to reality and you're left lacking. And then that creates these issues. And the worst part about it is so often our comparisons don't even actually make sense. I mean, you might be playing a game that's rigged. My friend Sam was, he was the best in the gym at that daggum row machine, but the game had been rigged against him. And so he thought he was less than what he really was. When you look online and you see social media, you see Instagram, whatever, that's not real. That's a rigged game. Okay, yeah, that couple, they look amazing and you have relationship goals and all these things because their life looks awesome, but you only saw a snapshot, a literal snapshot, a, a moment in time. And what you didn't see were the other 23 hours and 59 minutes of that day when these two people didn't even like each other when they're yelling at each other, yelling at their kids, like things are going crazy. You didn't see any of that. You just saw that moment where they're all smiling and pretending like life is fine. And so then you end up comparing other people's highlights, their rigged game, to your behind the scenes. And then there's a disconnect, there's a gap. And that out of that comparison comes depression, sadness, feeling like you're nothing, feeling like you're nobody, not because you actually are, just because of the gap, because of the comparison. Several years ago, I was teaching high school English and I would have these students come up to me and they'd be like, oh man, I'm just, I'm just not a very good writer. And I would ask them like, well, why do you, why do you think that? And they'd say, oh man, just look at Hemingway and Tolkien and, and just all these amazing writers and these, these stories that we're reading. And it's just, I can, I can never be anything close to that. And it's like, you're 15. Like you just started writing like, like seven minutes ago. Like you just literally just started figuring out how to use conjunctions. Like just, just a few grades ago. You know what I mean? Like it's just, <laughs> just so preposterous to look at somebody else's work when they've been doing it for 40 years and then think, yeah, I'm not any good. It's like, well, you just, you just started, you know, they're on level 99 and you're on level two. That, that's the difference. But again, out of that comparison, comes these awful, awful things. And you had these teenagers thinking that they were, not only were they not any good, but they could never be any good based on the comparison. How to start. I'm hungry. I should get coffee. Coffee would help me think. But I should write something first, then reward myself with coffee. And I would tell them, you know, the truth is J.R.R. Tolkien and Ernest Hemingway and every other writer that we will ever, you know, mention in this class, Honestly, they were trash at one point. But the thing is, you are not ever gonna see their first drafts. You're never gonna see the zillion stories that these folks threw in the garbage that were not worth the paper that they had been written on. You're not gonna see that. And so just understand that. And you're, you're never gonna see their behind the scenes, but you know all the deep down behind the scenes in your own life. And so don't compare, comparison, again, thief of joy. And so there's really no reason why you should spend any time at all comparing yourself to other people. You're not running their race. They're not running your race. I mean, you have no idea what opportunities and advantages and, and things that they've had in their life versus the lack of opportunities and the disadvantages that you've had in your life. And to compare and, and think through the comparison, it's just, it's a waste of time. And it will destroy your productivity. It will prevent you from actually doing the work and actually getting better and actually doing anything of value because you're spending so much time and mental energy and effort on comparing. And the only comparison you should ever really think about is between you and you from yesterday, you from a week ago, you from a month ago, a year ago. Are you further down your road, down your path and further in your race today than you were last year? And if the answer is yes, awesome, keep going. If the answer is no, why not? and assess that and figure some things out and maybe change some things and do whatever it takes to get on a path where you're moving forward. But to waste time to spend the mental energy and effort on comparing yourself to other people, especially when the game might be rigged, especially when you're not getting the full picture, you're not seeing the entire, you know, everything. You're just wasting time that you could be spending on things that actually matter, things that actually have 
value. And so the comparison is really you versus you. The race is long, but it's only against yourself. And how can you get better today than you were yesterday? And it doesn't have to be by leaps and bounds. You don't always have to have these giant transformation, this big metamorphosis. It's just one step at a time. Can you move one inch further today than you did yesterday? And then just keep going because in a year's time, you turn around and you realize, oh wow, I've come a long way, but it only felt like one inch at a time. But that's how it works. So quit worrying about other people. Because I think if you can do that, if you can find a way to really just compare yourself to you and not think about anybody else in that way, I think your productivity will skyrocket. I think you'll find a way to start accomplishing a lot more than you are right now because you won't be living in this weird rift and this weird gap of where you think you should be compared to where you are. You'll just live on a daily basis thinking, okay, what can I get done today? But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments about things that have destroyed your productivity. Am I on the right track or are there some other things that you've experienced that just totally got you off the rails? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.